three crucial things we mentioned towards the end of that meeting that affects our inability to see the manifestation of the activity or activeness and power of the word in our lives. Hardness of heart, an unbelieving heart, and a disobedient heart. Now you will realize that all of this have to do with the heart. And when we talk about the heart, we're not talking about that biological organ within us that is pumping blood. We talk about the heart in terms of the center or the crux of a matter. So the heart of man is the spirit of man. Man is a spirit who has a soul and dwells in a body. What we see here is just a body. It will one day be without the spirit. That's when we say the man has died. And all we'll be left with will be just a carcass that will return back to dust. But the spirit and the soul will return to the one who brought it in to this body. That is to God. Now those who live as God wants them to live will dwell with God forever. Those who live contrary to God will be sentenced to a, a life of eternal separation in hell away from God. It's not a pleasant thing. And the almighty God is going to help us to make sure that when the time comes for each, and of us, each one of us to go to be with him, our spirit man will not be rejected by the almighty. Amen. So for us to be able to discuss this issue of the heart of man that receives the word or does not receive the word, the heart of man that ought to receive the word and ought to be changed, because I think we discussed this last week when we said that the word of God is like a, a sharper than any double-edged sword, right? We said it cuts, it separates soul from the spirit or spirit from the soul. It makes that clear separation. When the word of God comes, it, it it's, first of all cleaves between the soul and the spirit, and then it begins to act upon the spirit. It is the spirit that gives access to the Holy Spirit to begin to make its effect, take its action on the soul and kill whatever is in the soul that ought not to be there and then replace it with everything that God wants. Now, for example, in the soul of man, that's where we have our thoughts. That's where we have our emotions, our decision taking. That's where we have our desires within the heart. When the word of God comes into, sorry, within the soul rather, when the word of God now comes into your heart, into your spirit man, and the Holy Spirit is present there, there is a, there, there is a, what do you call it, an activity that takes place within the soul of man. The spirit of God goes in there and begins to remove every thought, the worldly thoughts that we have, the um, emotions that we express that are carnal, our desires that are carnal, that are worldly, our decision making, the base of our decision making, which is based on what A or B has said, and we make all those, it begins to remove those things. And it replaces it with the thoughts that are of God. With decision making based on the word of God. Gives, removes the emotion of, well, this is how this man feels, or this is how this thing, this is how I feel. So because of the way I feel, I'm going to do it this way. It removes all of that. It deadens us to those feelings so that we can take decisions based primarily on what God is saying to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, on the basis of all of this, when all of this is now removed and God has put his own in there, we now have the man who is growing and maturing. It is this man who has been able to take charge of the soul that is the one that grows to maturity. Do you understand? His soul is not controlling him. He is not a soulish man. 
Let me try and explain one or two things from the word of God and then we, we look at if, a few other scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let me read it from verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I, I want you to note the use of those words, eyes, ears, and heart. We are not talking of natural organs. We are speaking here of spiritual organs. And even when you refer it in the natural, its effect is not natural. Its effect has to be spiritual. For example, though I see with my natural eye, I cannot give a natural interpretation to what I am seeing. I will be making a wrong decision. Do you understand? So my natural eye, though my eye is seeing something, I must receive its interpretation from the Spirit of God. So my eye must be seen in a spiritual sense. When I hear something, I am not listening, even though I'm listening with my natural ears, it must be translated by the Spirit of God. Do you understand? So that I'm not acting just based on what I hear, but I'm acting based on what the Spirit of God is saying to me deep inside my spirit. Let me, let me pause here because I need to explain a lot of these things. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. Um, and I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. And probably we'll take it to... Well, let, let's just read 1 and 2 and then we'll see if we can read, if we take more. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Here, they're speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Go to verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Shall make him what? Of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after what? The sight of his eyes. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Verse 4. But with righteousness shall be judged, shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Verse 5, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. He is telling us that the Lord Jesus, when he comes, will not judge, that is, this was before his first advent, that by the time he would come, he was not going to judge by merely seeing or merely hearing. How would he judge? He would judge by the Spirit of God, because the Spirit will enter him and will supply him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, with the spirit of counsel and might, with the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So his judgment will always be right. Do you understand? His judgment is not tainted by what is taking place in the soul. His judgment is straight from God. There is, I'm looking for how to express this as best as I can. Let's assume that this is your spirit man, right? Standing on his own. Now it is born again. For it to remain born again, it must be hooked up to the spirit of God. For as long as this link remains, everything that your spirit is acting upon is based on what now? The spirit of God. Do you understand? Now it is this action that makes your spirit man to be able to correctly interpret what it sees. Correctly interpret what it hears. So somebody comes to tell you something. The Spirit of God will say to you, don't mind him, he's lying to you. Do you understand? So you're not acting based on what he's saying. You're acting based on what the Spirit of God is telling you. Which means you must be open to the Spirit of God. Do you understand that? Now let's continue to read. I believe this should help us to make it very easy. In verse 10 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we're back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In verse 10, 
He says, but God hath revealed them unto us by who? By what? His spirit. Do you understand that now? We are not seen by the eye. We are not, we are not saying, oh, because I see this man smiling, so it means he's my friend. Because I see this man frowning, it means that he hates me. No. It is the spirit of God that is revealing something to me. Somebody presents me with, let's say, a business worth 20 million naira. There's a lot of money to be made in it. Naturally, I should go for it. Is that not so? But the Spirit of God would caution me. Say, Don't look at the money. I have rejected this business. Do you understand that? So your action is not based on what you have seen or the feasibility report or the profitability of the business, but it's based on who now? The judgment of the Spirit of God, which your spirit being connected to is receiving. Do you understand that? Okay. So verse 10 again. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. In verse 11 it says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now, we have received. We come across that word again, received. We have welcomed, we have accepted. Not the spirit of the world. Please note that. If we receive the spirit of the world, how would our spirit man respond based on the world's way of doing things? So it says, we have not received. We, we have received, rather, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. When we got born again, that's what we received. We received the spirit of God. That we might know. We might what? Know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth. Our, 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 what, what the things that the, the knowledge that we receive of the things that God has for us is not based on some um, Harvardian doctrinal teaching. Do you understand? It says, but which the Holy Ghost teach is based on the teaching of the Spirit of God. I think it's in First John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27 put together, where the Bible says, but ye have received an unction from on high. And you don't need anyone to teach you again. You have the spirit which teaches you all things. So even as I'm speaking to you, the spirit of God in you, if your spirit man is connected to the spirit of God, should bear witness that this indeed is the correct interpretation of the scripture. Do you understand that? Now, where that is not the case, then we must question one of two things. Either the fellow who is making the teaching or the recipient, is he hooked to the spirit of God? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's how the Spirit of God does. He compares spiritual things. He does not compare natural things. He doesn't know. It's based on the spiritual things. You must understand that. In verse 14 now, he says, But the natural man receiveth not, does not welcome, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. Now, this is very crucial. Remember the union I told you of. That your spirit is always linked with the spirit of God. Right? Now, if a man is born again, but refuses the spirit of God, this is what is happening. His spirit man is closed. And the spirit can't get in. So, what is happening at that point in time? His natural man is still in charge. And so his decisions are based on the natural rather than the spiritual. So he enters into a business proposition based on profitability and feasibility rather than based on the word of God. A business can be profitable for two years and after that it goes bust. 
But you wouldn't know that. Based on the natural, it's profitable because the conditions you are looking at tells you that it's profitable. A few years down the line, those conditions will change. You don't know that. But God knows. So God tells you what to do based on what he knows. And he knows better than you and I. And then, it is a spirit who knows the mind of God who communicates that to us. But when your spirit is closed, do you see what is happening? He's trying to get a word in, but he can't get it. So at the end of the day, you are left back where you started with the soul in charge. You have no choice but to take your decisions based on what the soul. The soul is natural. It's soulish. So your decisions are soulish. That's what he's saying here. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually descent. They can only be understood within the context of the spiritual. You can never understand it in the natural. For example, when Elijah in 2 Kings chapter 7 gave that prophecy that within 24 hours, this, the, 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 there will be food in excess in Israel. It was too hard to, be, to believe. Not after you have gone to school and you've learned economics and you've studied international trade and you've studied agriculture where you know that there's no way you're going to plant something now and you germinate tomorrow. There's no way a siege will be over and food will be able to enter into the place. They didn't know what God knew. Elisha spoke based on what God told him. Do you understand? Not based on what any other person was saying. And the natural man is unable to discern that because he is natural. In verse 15 it says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. He can, he can evaluate. He can judge all things. He can discern all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, that he may instruct God? Nobody. But we have the mind of Christ. Christ. 